All right, guys, let's start reviewing for the final, Algebra 1 final, that is. So uh, one type of question that you're going to have on there is a quadratic equation. So it's as simple as this. How do you solve any equation? You want to get W by itself. You want to get the variable by itself. And how do you get rid of something? You do the opposite. So when you think of this square, you want to get rid of the square. How do you get rid of something? You do the opposite. So you need to apply a square root to both sides. Now. Keep in mind that there's a detail. Whenever you apply a square root on an equation, you have to put a plus minus in front of your answer. So uh, the square root that you just applied will undo the square. And what are you going to have left? Just the w minus 12. Of course, uh, we still have the equal sign. And remember, if you apply a square root, you have to put a plus minus right in front of your answer, which gives you a plus minus 36. Actually, no, not 36 but um, 6, because the square root of 36 is just 6. So there we go. Uh, we still need to get rid of the minus 12, so we're going to go plus 12 and plus 12. Now, this is going to be a little weird because the plus 12 needs to be added and subtracted with the 6. So we need to rewrite it um, with both the plus and the minus 6. So let me rewrite it up here. We have 12. And we have the plus 6, or plus or minus 6. And then you could say 12 plus 6 and 12 minus 6. So your two answers will be 18 and uh, 6. So your two answers are 18 and 6. So the answer to number 1, actually two answers, 18 and 6. Let's take a look at number two, simplify. Okay, now we do have a rational exponent. It's a rational exponent. And uh, let's do some side notes here for rational exponents. I don't know if you remember, but um, on a rational exponent, let's see, you have your base, and you have a p over r, which means the numerator on the exponent is the power, and the denominator on the exponent is the root, okay? So uh, in other words, this exponent situation can be rewritten as the root of b to whatever power p. OK, I know that that sounds a little confusing. But let's say, for example, you had uh, 16 to the 3 halves power. OK, so the top number, the 3, is the power. The bottom number is a root. So that's a square root, and that's a third power. So if you wanted to, on a calculator, you could say 16 to the third power, get a huge answer, and then take the square root of it. Or you could take the square root of 16 and then do it to the third power, OK? Um, either way is fine. So uh, let's say you want to do the square root of it, because it's uh, a 2 down there. So let's do the square root of 16, and you're going to get 4. And there's no longer a 3 halves, now there's just a 3. And then you could say, OK, 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 4 is 64 as your final answer for 16 to the 2 thirds power. OK, so um, let's, do, let's use that same idea of power over root to be able to do this right here. So technically, this is the fourth power, and this is the fifth root. OK, so we need to do the fifth root of this. And of course, you could use calculators, so go for it. Try to do it on a calculator. And if you mess with the calculator for a little while and you went 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 five times, you will get 1,024. So technically, the fifth root of this guy, so let me show you. You could rewrite it like this, the fifth root because of the 5 that's on the bottom, and put the 1,024 right in there, okay? And when you do, and you still have, you still have this uh, uh, numerator, which is a power, okay? So if you did do the fifth root of 1,024 on a calculator, you will get 4. And now you still have the power of 4 right there. So we're going to go 4 to the power of 4 on a calculator. 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. That is 256. So the final answer here is 256. You know what? This is kind of ridiculous. Um, you don't really even need to know that, because on the final, you could use calculators. So on the calculator, you could simply type in um, 1,024, and then hit the caret button, which will take you up to an exponent. And in the uh, exponent position, I would use parentheses. And then I would type in the uh, 4 over 5 right in there. 
And we know that that really means 4 divided by 5. So if you type in 4 divided by 5 all on your calculator, hit, hit the equal button and it'll give you the answer directly 256, okay? So you could either understand the uh, notation, the power over root situation that we have here, or you could just know how to use your calculator and type it all into your calculator. 1024, caret button, open some parentheses up, four fifths power, just put four divided by five, close parentheses, hit the equal button, it'll give you this answer. All right, number three, find the coordinates of the vertex of the graph of the function. So it depends. Do you want to look at number three in vertex form or standard form? Let's zoom in here. Do you want to look at this in vertex form or standard form? So there's vertex form. Um, standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c. Um, so this one, you actually have the option of looking at it as ax squared plus 0x, which is a bx minus or plus c, which is minus 7. Or you could even look at it in vertex form. Vertex form uh, has the h value in parentheses with x. So what is the h value right there on number three? So to state the vertex, we know that our h value, remember the, the hk value is actually your vertex. So looking at h, which is zero, and looking at k, which is negative seven, boom, you're done, you found the vertex. Easy peasy, right? Now you can't do that with this next one because it's in standard form. So it's not like you could identify H and K because it's not in vertex form. It has two X's and that creates a, a problem, right? So it's standard form. You have to go with the, the formula X equals negative B over two A. And of course, when you apply it, um, use parentheses and obviously identify what your A value is and your B value is. The C value is not even in this formula. C value is 5 just for kicks. Okay, so the B value is negative 7. The A value is 3. So let's uh, do the math. The minus minus changes the plus plus. You have 7 over 6. So 7 over 6 is the X value of the vertex. Dang, this is going to get messy because we have a fraction. However, uh, on your multiple choice answers, all right, on your multiple choice answers on the final exam, you should be able to see your X value of the vertexes that they give you, and you should be, the only one with the, the fraction seven over six is gonna be your answer. Does that make sense? Um, should we continue on and plug it in? Sure, why not, let's do it. So if you wanna, this is your X value right here. This is your X value of your vertex, seven, six. So the vertex, x value is 7 6 and we need to find the y value and to do that you'd have to rewrite this whole quadratic trinomial equation and of course we'd have to plug in the 7 6 right into those parentheses this is going to get really ugly so uh, we're going to start with the 7 6 squared that's really 7 6 times 7 6 which is 49 over 36 and let's keep that in parentheses because we still have a times three out here in the front. That kind of works out because when you multiply by three, you could put it over a one and you could cancel out the three with the 36 and get a 12 down there. So you're really gonna, are gonna end up with 49 over 12 on your first term. Let's uh, move on to the next part right here, multiplying. So you can't really cancel the seven with the six. You're gonna have to actually multiply seven times seven with the minus sign in front, that'll be a uh, minus 49 over 6 plus 5 at the very end, bringing that down. So we have to uh, work on this right here. And uh, we need a common denominator to be able to uh, combine this first fraction with the second fraction. So you're going to ultimately have to multiply by 2 and multiply by 2. So we have a common denominator now. We could actually... Uh, do 49 take away 98 that's simply going to be a negative 49 <coughs> over 12 and we still have the plus 5 so let's change the denominator of 5 which is a 1 to become a 12 by multiplying both top and bottom by 12 and our new problem I know this is really messy and long our new problem is going to be negative 49 over 12 plus 
60, 6 times 12 is 60, over 12. And we could actually combine the numerators now. Negative 49 plus 60, that would be 11. So 11 over 12 is your y value of your vertex. Yeah, it's a tremendous amount of work. Um, so we found our x value of our vertex, which was 7 6. And we said that the y value is 11 12. And that's it. Now keep in mind on the final exam, when you get your x value of your vertex, look at your multiple choice answers. Just by looking at the x value of your vertex, you'll be able to eliminate all the other ones and be able to find your correct answer. Cool? Yeah. All right, let's move on. The next section is find the product. We're going to be multiplying. And obviously, when you have binomials and trinomials, you're going to be distributing, right? When you have variables in general, you distribute. So um, on number five, this is going to take a, a good minute or two to do this. We need to take the negative 7k and multiply it by negative 6k squared. What do I get when I multiply negative 7 times negative 6? Positive 42. How about k times k squared? k to the third, okay. And then how about negative 7k times positive 2k? Negative 14k squared, okay. And how about negative 7k times negative 7? Plus 49 with a k. All right. And now we're going to distribute the second term. We already distributed this first one. Now let's distribute the second one. So uh, let's go in a different colored uh, positive 5 times negative 6, that's going to give us what? Negative 30. negative 30k squared. Now notice, instead of writing it over here on the side, I'm already going to pair them up with what I'm going to have to combine with. Now, what do I mean by that? Um, I'm going to write the uh, negative 30k squared right underneath the other k squared term. Because I'm going to have to combine like terms anyway. Okay? And then I go uh, positive 5 times positive 2k. That's going to be a positive 10k. And notice that I already lined it up right underneath the 49k because I don't have to combine those anyway. And last but not least, 5 times negative 7. That's negative 35. And that's just at the end over here, negative 35. And now I could combine them. And since I lined them up, it's really easy to do. My final answer is going to be... Uh, 42k to the third. And then uh, when I combine negative 14 and negative 30k, or negative 14 and negative 30, we get a negative 44k squared. And when I combine 49 and 10 of the k's right there, we get 59k, that is. And also, let's not forget about the minus 35 at the very end. And that's the final answer right there, guys. Distributing. Uh, number six. That is a binomial squared. Do not make the mistake of distributing the exponent. That's incorrect. It's a binomial, so we need to actually write it twice. And after you write it twice, you need to distribute one at a time. 6c times 6c, 36c squared. 6c times 6, that's positive 36c. And then 6 times 6c is another positive 36c. And 6 times 6 is positive 36. The only other thing you could do is combine the positive 36c with the positive 36c, giving you a positive 72c. So we have the first term, 36c squared plus 72c plus 36 as your final answer. I hope this helps. Uh, we're going to pick up on number 7 on the next video.